We've got a nervous Carl Wilson here with us today. Hello and welcome to this interview. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is James Broadbent. I'm the CEO and founder of Narrative. And sitting with me here today is Carl Wilson, our Head of Industry and Education at Narrative. Yeah, I'm really excited to have this conversation with you today and sort of deepen yeah, and the connection that you have with narrative audience um i'm incredibly excited to have you on board as an employee of narrative and just excited to what you're going to bring to our community um and i think you'll share a little bit with us today as to what sort of what that will look like and and what that would be yeah to kick things off just to so that you know everyone can learn a little bit about you i'd love to hear just a real brief intro who are you where do you live um what do you do yeah. Uh, my name is Kyle Wilson. I'm Micro Jupiter on Instagram. Um, I live in Chicago, but my business is based out, based out of Seattle, Washington. And so I've been a wedding photographer for the last 10 years or so, full time, as well as some other types of photography work. And now recently, I am here at Narrative as the head of industry insight and education. It's, yeah. We're, and we're, of which we're super excited about. Um, yeah, myself too. Really so great. Amazing. great. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about the kind of photography that you do. It's kind of been a long road. Um, when I first started photographing weddings, it was more like church and ballrooms, photographing things on golf courses, trying to make golf courses not look like golf courses, um, very suburbs of Chicago. Uh, and then as I grew in the wedding industry and started to meet more people and be have more access um, to the types of content that I wanted to make or the types of weddings that I wanted to shoot, um, I started gravitating towards more emotional or kind of what we'd call dark and moody photography out on the west coast and now i bounce between chicago and washington but i really travel kind of anywhere and all over the world similar to you i photographed in many countries mm -hmm. uh, and really many states throughout uh the united states as well so is it pretty much all weddings yeah 99.9 .9 percent of my income comes from weddings the other additional work that i shoot is really just stuff for me so i have a lot of model photography that i might do or even street photography or the occasional landscape or product if I'm in a cool place for something. But um, all that stuff I've really relegated to not be an income driven focus mm. type of photography because I, I really want that to be for me. And it allows me to decide when I want to do it, how long I want to do it for, when I want to get back to it and what type of shoots I want to do. Whereas weddings, as you know, is just this thing where I don't really have a choice in the matter. Um, it's on this day. There's It's either a week out or a year out that we're planning our schedules. Um, and so I found myself throughout this career of this very concrete schedule and concrete types of timelines that I don't get to control. I wanted some work that I get to dictate. So yeah. weddings pay the bills yeah. and fun shoots don't. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it's just so important to have that work, which inspires you. And in so many cases, I found that you need like the space to try something new and be creative. Sometimes you can't really take a risk at a wedding and it can really elevate your work. And so I guess like what I wanted to ask sort of off the back of that is, what is it that you're most proud of? Like, what is the shoot or a job or, you know, a client that you work for that you're like, I'm, I, yeah, that you're just really proud of? It's really the kind of client that I'm really proud of. I get these mm. really great clients who, I think when I talk to just regular non-photographer people and I tell them I'm a wedding photographer, they, they get this idea in mind of this very specific kind of two or 300 person wedding where it's just kind of a couple and they're just having a wedding to have a wedding. And they're probably in love, mm. but it's not quite the relationship type that maybe I would gravitate towards myself um, or even just in my business or personal life. Um, and so the types of clients that I get really have this heavy love. And that's something I talk about on my website a lot is I'm trying to find uh, clients and people that have a heavy love. Um, so things that aren't necessarily always happy. There's not a lot of smiles on my Instagram feed. If you look through, there's not people really jumping for joy or running down the aisle, very excited. They tend to be a little bit more reserved and kept to themselves. That's not to say that they don't get those types of images, but that's the kind of work. And I, I really got so lucky to really continually work with a lot of clients that allowed me to shoot their wedding day from the inside out or from the perspective mm -hmm. of a friend. Um, and so I'm just really proud about the clientele that I got to work with in terms of you're cheating the answer though. Yeah. Tell me oh, like, yeah, what yeah. is, the, what is um, the you know what I really like, wanted? You know what I, I, what I really wanted, I wanted, um, 
when I was a kid, my dad was a wedding photographer and mm. he had range finder all the time in the house. It was so mm. always in the bathroom <laughs> and he would be looking through it. And I always wanted to be on the cover of range finder. It was kind of the thing that I really targeted for. Um, yeah. And so I was really lucky that a couple of years ago I got to have the cover of range finder. Uh, I couldn't tell you the month without looking at it right now. Um, but that was really cool. And it was something that I got to really chase down myself and connect and make a, make a uh, relationship with the editors from there and, and write an article and actually have this thing. And so now it sits in my parents' house. Uh, of course, they have multiple copies, but it's pretty neat to be like, that's that magazine my dad had as a kid when I was younger. And now I'm on it. Wow. I didn't know that. That is really cool. And that is something to be so proud of. And I think it's like amazing because I know you told me your dad, your dad was a photographer as well. And like something he must be so proud of as well. So that's amazing. You kind of touched on this a little bit, but for someone who hasn't seen your work before, how, how would you kind of describe your brand? My brand is a little bit more calm and reserved compared to like what I would assume is wedding photography as a whole. Um, I like moments that are a little softer and a little quieter. It's not uncommon of me for to have a client and to just put them in a spot and not talk to them for a minute or two or three and just let them kind of muscle relax and fall into their own position. I never want to take photos of clients where it just looks like a version of themselves um, mm -hmm. that feels kind of magazine-ish or uh, editorial. I really want them to look at photos that when they look at it in five or 10 years, that the wedding doesn't just look like their day, but it really feels like their day. Um, and ideally in this perfect magical world, they open their wedding album and it's laying on their table five years from now. And as they look through it, these memories start to, to pour out and all these little tiny uh, spring off conversations with people around the table start talking about the day. And um, so my work is a little, um, it would be classified as dark and moody, I'd say by just broad terms, but um, um, gloomy and sad might be another. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's like, it drives some kind of emotional um, connection. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, you. I feel like you can feel what people were feeling when you look at your photos. Um, I have a heavy inspiration from cinema and yeah. seeing things. I, I really always connect with movies and film where every scene feels like a painting. Every scene of its own could have been a poster or a painting. And mm -hmm. I think I would really struggle in anything like video to produce that kind of content. But photos so fortunate that with a frame and a really great location and, a, and everything all lines up, I can make something that feels like a screen grab out of a movie. And yeah, that's kind of that. always in the back of my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So like, yeah, it's, it, I, now that you mention it, it's, I can really see that as well. So you've, um, you've spent quite a lot of time educating photographers. Can you tell me a little bit about what that's looked like? Like what have you, I know that you've run loads of workshops, but I don't know specifically like what, yeah, what is that thing? Yeah. Uh, in the past, what that looked like was I really didn't love the big full convention workshops. I'd gone to a couple of them myself when I was learning and starting out and found that I, I made connections and networking. I think they were great, but I didn't leave home with really tangible stuff. I didn't mm -hmm. leave home or leave and come home with things that were going to book me work in the kind of work that I wanted to have. And so the workshops that I ran were much smaller. They tend to be in the 12 to 15 person category. Um, and I would bring in other speakers as well to try to like pad the information because um, I felt that I might be an expert in this one thing, but there's going to be 10 or 12 other spaces within the wedding photography space that I want to bring other people in as well. Mm -hmm. So they sometimes they were a day, sometimes they were two or three days. Um, and it allowed me to really focus on a handful of different topics. The things I really focused on were kind of some of the boring things like branding and data backup. It's something that I'm just a data dork. I'm a real nerd about it, and I'm really particular with where things are put. Um, and so that's stuff I really liked to educate around. And then I would bring other people in for um, maybe more lively discussions about things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that stuff is so important. It's like, yeah. as a photographer, it's like the left brain, right brain stuff. It's like, we're so good at doing the artistic stuff. But yeah, knowing how to um, just manage your workflow and back up your stuff is, doesn't come so obvious. So Yeah, I think it's yeah. like when we're kids in school, we're not taught to do taxes or do budgets, and we probably should be. Um, and a lot of workshops and educational material kind of skips some of the more boring parts of our job mm. that I think are just so important to be talked about. Yeah. 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 So I really want to ask you if I wanted to, I don't know, book Kyle Wilson for 
uh, waiting? How, how much would I need to spend? Uh, these days, I'm starting at, let's see, I just recently rechanged my things around, but I'm starting around 7,000 for six hours of coverage with myself and just just that. So after that, things get added on with other photographers and album collections and things like that. Um, but just to get me out the door is about 7,000. Yeah, yeah. I think that really kind of speaks to the, the credibility of, um, yeah, your work and your ability to like charge such a high amount is like, People really want Kyle Wilson to shoot their wedding. Yeah, it's it's very humbling. I remember even even ten years ago when I was charging whatever I was charging, I would always feel like kind of a little kid. Like I cannot believe this couple is sitting across from me paying me thousands of mm. dollars. They're trusting me, and I still even honestly feel that way to this day. I'll meet with clients who might even be younger than me, but maybe feel more successful than me in various mm. areas of their life. And I often am like, wow, I, I, I'm really humbled that these people reached out. They connected with my work amongst so many other photographers online um, and said, oh, I really want I want Kyle or Mike or Jupiter. Mm. Um, and so the fact that they're willing to pay that amount for me is always just kind of, it, it really leaves me in a sense of awe. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, but, you know, people value photography so much and they want to get the best photographer and they want to find the best photographer that exists. So, um, you know, like you're clearly one of the best photographers in the world, maybe within like this category of the hundredth best photographer in the world or something like that. You've been published on like magazines. Um, uh, why, why come work at narrative? Oh man, such a good question. Um, there's been a lot of brands that I've worked with over the years in terms of tools that I've used or people that have reached out to me to use their product or to try it or to talk about it. Um, and there's been a lot of, a lot of tools that have done the made by photographers for photographers pitch, which always seems a little disconnected. Um, and every time I look up these photographers, I, I don't know who they are. I don't really recognize any of their work. There's somebody that maybe they were a photographer and maybe they succeeded at it. And I don't know, but maybe they failed at it and then diverted to another career path, which happened to be making this tool. Um, but I came across narrative years ago when it was just publish and I really enjoyed it. And then throughout the course of just using narrative and hearing about it, uh, learning about who you were and the work that you produce and just the kind of photographer that you already were, which I really connected with. I feel that mm. within the industry, it would be safe to say that we are pretty similar. Um, and the fact that you wanted to make a product that really emphasized bettering that kind of work really mm. resonated with me. Um, and then after that, it was just the tool is amazing. I would have killed to have select uh, five years <laughs> yeah. ago when I was shooting 40 or 50 weddings a year consistently. That would have been so so much time I would have gotten back from being in yeah. front of my computer if I'd had select in my hands. Um, but instead I was calling through Lightroom smart previews. <laughs> yeah. 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 So many, so many others have said the same thing. And like, what is it about select that I, I know everyone kind of like uses it in different ways. How do you use select in your workflow and what does that mean for you? I think the big thing for me is calling has always felt like this thing that I just have to get through. And I just need to get through it so I can get the part that I like, which is editing images and really delivering. The delivery of the content is the thing that I want to do most. Um, and so Select really just, it works the same way that I work. As soon as I get the images that I need out of, like Scenes Mode is by far like the most superior thing that the app does for me. Um, as soon as I get what I need out of the eight or nine family photos in this one section that I need, let's let's go. We got stuff to mm -hmm. do. Um, and that, that works so well for my style of photography. Um, I don't do a lot of blurry stuff, but I do a little bit of closed eye stuff and I really like stuff with motion and hair movement. And the fact that it's a program that allows for that to still be in my process of calling images rather mm. than I've tried other AI tools in the past where you just kind of dump your photos in, click it, walk away, go make a sandwich. And I'd come back and go, well, yeah, I guess it sorted it, but it didn't sort it the way I want it sorted. This is confusing yeah. and okay, eyes closed are purple and blurry ones are green and I don't like this. It doesn't work how I work and select really works how I work. I think it's kind of the whole concept is built around that and I love that that's what you understand. It's like it's this tool that assists you in, in making the process faster and enabling you to like find the images that are right for you. So yeah. um, 
yeah, there's a whole lot which you have planned over the next few months, and I'm really excited to see that. What should the narrative community expect to hear from you over the next few weeks and months? Um, we've got a few different series coming out of videos. One is going to be featuring myself, just talking about some features of the app and some kind of more insider tips and tricks. Those are going to be nice, short 30 to 60 second videos just to help people kind of add new things to their workflow. Um, we're also going to be adding a little bit of a workflow series. So I'm going to go through some more boring things like memory card ingesting or memory card ingesting and dated backup and Dropbox and Backblaze and all that fun stuff. Um, and then I'm also going to be doing more one-on-one -on -one discussions like this with some of our ambassadors and some other non-ambassadors as well, just talking about a really broad range of topics in not a Q&A format, but more of a peer-on-peer -peer, uh, discussion, just learning about their world and whatever topic or um, educational space that they're really invested in and want to focus mm -hmm. on sharing more about. Awesome. I'm excited to hear. I'm really excited I'm to really, hear. Yeah, I'm um, really excited for those. Those conversations as well. So cool. Well, uh, hey, thanks for the, um, thanks for taking the time to, to chat. Um, we'll, I'm sure we'll continue to hear a lot from you. And um, yeah, that's all for today. Thanks. Have a good one, man. See ya.